Hello, inside this tutorial we're going to learn how to use BCS Metaman to create an external content type for SharePoint 2013. On the left hand side under data source when we open up BCS Metaman you'll notice different data sources that we can build an external content type for. Right at the very top we have Microsoft Dynamics online, we also have OData, we have ODBC in which there's multiple different external data sources that we can connect to via ODBC. We also have Oracle and Salesforce.com, Microsoft SQL Server and a WCF web service. In this demo we're going to connect to a Microsoft SQL Server database. So we can provide the name of the database that we want to connect to, in which case this is remembered that I'm connecting to the server called SP2013. And we can also choose the authentication mode. Now the authentication mode can be set to either username and password, in which case we're going to send a username and password to the underlying database to connect to it, or we're going to use Windows authentication. And it's important to learn that the settings here are going to be the settings that we will use as well in order to configure the external content type using Metaman. So we ourselves must be able to connect to the underlying database. We could also use Secure Store for authentication, in which case we can specify the Secure Store ID. Uh, we'll talk more about that in a later video. What we're going to do here is just use Windows authentication, and bear in mind that if you're using NTLM uh, as an authentication protocol, then you may find that you suffer from the double hop issue if your SQL Server database is on a different machine to the SharePoint server. In that case, uh, either use Kerberos authentication or also configure the Secure Store to overcome that. Once we've set the authentication properties, we can choose from a drop down list the name of the database that we want to connect to. So in this case I'm going to connect to the Northwind database. We can then hit the blue arrow to connect to the database and that will return any tables, views or stored procedures available with inside that database. I'm going to click onto the tables and we're going to simply drag and drop the customers table onto the design surface and we can select which methods we want to create as well. So notice we've got the finder method and the specific finder method selected. They are the two required methods. The finder method, otherwise known as the read list method, is going to return all of the columns and all of the rows. The specific finder method is going to return a single row based on the identifier. And that's used inside the external list when we want to view an item or click onto the edit item to actually open up the edit properties dialog. Um, it's also used inside the search results when we click onto a, a search result and we want to open it up inside the profile page. It's also used in some of the web parts like the BDC item web part as well. So we'll have those two selected. Uh, you must have those two as I mentioned for the external list. We have the ID enumerator which is uh, good practice to build an ID enumerator for the search indexing and then we also have a creator updater and deleter method which we will use with inside the external list in order to be able to write back to the underlying database. Notice on the left hand side that the identifier is already set, the primary key. We've already set a name as well for the external content type but we can change that if we want to. So once we've uh, configured that we just need to hit create and that puts the entity on the design surface. Now from here we can preview the data. If we just click the uh, icon in the top right hand corner it will display the first 10 rows of that table so we can at least make sure that this is the right data we're expecting to see before deploying the model to SharePoint. We can also right click that entity and choose configure entity and this will allow us to go through and set some other properties like different methods and so on uh, which we'll do in just a moment. Before I do that I'm going to drag and drop the orders table onto the design surface as well. We will also create the same methods and click create. And now we can build an association between those two entities. So I just simply drag and drop a join between the grab handles on the entities. And we can set the primary key and we can set the foreign key for those tables and hit create. So this will allow me to display all customers inside a web part and then when we click onto an item with inside 
the customer's table such as a, a customer name then we will also see the associated orders inside another table on the same page. Now before we go any further we want to also go through and set any other properties that we want to define. One of them is the title column. So the title column we can set here. This is something that you can easily set inside the user interface but you don't want to be setting it 20 or 30 times every time you add a web part that's going to display customers. So we can have a little bit of a shortcut here by setting the title property for the company name column. Now we also have the office item type and this is used specifically for taking this data and displaying it inside Microsoft Outlook. So we can bring this data in as contacts or we can bring it in as appointments, posts or tasks. I'm just going to leave it as it is since I won't be using Outlook with that. We can then go to the methods tab. Now the methods tab will show us the methods that we've already created but it will also allow us to add more methods or define uh, any filters or other properties inside the customer's finder method. So in here we're going to first of all click on to add a filter and I'm going to create a limit filter here. So we'll set the uh, filter type to limit and we'll set the customer ID as the primary key which it requires and we'll enter a default value. So if you don't create a limit filter SharePoint will provide a warning to you that you should have done so. The reason for this is to make sure that we don't go beyond the capabilities of an external list since that will have a default maximum of 2,000 rows which can be increased to 5,000. Now remember that that is per method so we could have uh, multiple methods which we're going to create here each one could have its own limit filter so I'm just going to save that limit filter there and uh, we'll click on to uh, update okay now the other thing we might want to do is go through and create another method so every method that I create can become another view inside the external lists and also inside the web parts so what I'll do here is call this one German customers and we will set the operation type to finder and we'll hit save. So that gives me another finder method and this time I can go through and set another filter called by country. We'll make it a wildcard filter and I'm going to map it to the country field and the default value we will give it is Germany but that will also allow the user to change the default value if they want to as well. Now that we've saved that we can again update the entity and notice that we will see our new filter method or finder method inside the entity there. Now we can also go through and create these things called custom actions as well. Now I'm going to add a predefined custom action which is a Google search and I'll select my Google search custom action and notice here we've got a parameter that's going to be passed through to it called customer ID which I'm going to change to company name and I'm going to change the customer ID I'm going to remove the customer ID leaving just the company name to be passed through to the URL of google.com allowing users to be able to Google search a customer with just one click and rather than having Google search we'll just have search for customer so we can save that and we can click on to update okay so the next thing to do is to deploy our model so we can first of all go up to the settings and define a name for the model file um, the model name, the model namespace, lob system instance and uh, lob system uh, name can all be set in here. We can define the model file format whether we were looking to deploy this to 2010 or to 2013 and we also have a model deployment URL as well. So clicking on to save we can generate the actual model file so that will uh, build the model file for us or we can just simply hit deploy and that will do both it will generate the model file and it will deploy it directly to SharePoint so let's do that
Okay, so that has been deployed. There were two warnings that were indicating that there wasn't a limit filter on some of my methods, and that was on the get orders, get all orders from the orders entity, and also my German customers method. But that's fine, we can go on without that. I'm going to now go into SharePoint and we're going to edit the page in SharePoint. And let's test this by building some web parts. So we can go to the business data section and add a business data list web part. And we can also add a business data related list web part, which we can use to test our association as well. I'm going to hit save and close and, and then we'll click the open the tool pane to define our business data list and I'm going to select the external content type which is here called customers under tutorial and we'll apply that. Okay. Notice that on the customers we did also create the German customers view so that's showing here in the drop down as well. Uh, we're going to leave it as all data and we'll choose OK and then we're going to open up the tool pane for the related list as well and we're going to point that to the tutorial orders and it's picked up my association the join so all we need to do is hit apply there as well now the last thing we need to do is go through and edit the page and using connections we're going to send a connection through to the orders list and then we'll choose stop editing. So now we can basically go through and select a customer and we can see the orders on the right hand side are shown for that customer. And as we go through and select each customer, we'll see the connection is fired across.